Alright, what is up y'all? We are here today for week 5 of the PCL, going up against Drake, and uh, you already see his team, and you see that first Mon, and you see that fourth to last Mon, and uh, you see Shaden just straight up loses to uh, Coco Lucha, but I mean, doesn't everyone just kind of lose to Coco Lucha, unless you bring some fucking, unless you just have some disgustingly bulky shit, or uh, you know, some, some something something a little a little crazy. It's, uh, you tend to lose to Coco Lucha all the time. So, uh, with that in mind, I have a team. I'm also uh, not really looking forward to playing against Mamo. That thing is uh, very hard to switch into. Gengar, also a little bit of a problem. Mega Arrow is so fucking fast that it is, uh, it's not fun. It's a good good revenge killer, like good late game cleaner, something like that. And then uh, the man also has Snorlax and Hydreigon. So, I, you know, there's just threats all over the place, man. Uh... Mesprit looks annoying, Shaman looks annoying, there's a lot of stuff on this team that could potentially be super annoying, but we're going to try to out annoying this, so we're going to start things off, obviously we're going to be bringing sand, we need we need big doings here, and uh, we need him to set the sand, we need him to be able to get up stealth rocks, and uh, since Coco is his Z-move user, I think it's safe to assume that uh, Z-grass knot is probably coming on this on this uh, Coco, for sure Z's grass knot will be on the Coco. But uh, Z Grass Knot does kind of just blow me away. It gives him a way to hit, um, to hit the drill, not super effectively, but at least neutrally, and that is a Z move, so it's still gonna hurt. And uh, yeah, although the funny thing is, since uh, Hippo is so heavy, I believe Grass Knot does not quite as much damage, but almost as much damage as Z Grass Knot does. But we got the Rindo Berry and a little bit of Spadef on here to kind of help out with that. Now. Hippo is kind of funny this game because like I need him to be very physically defensive and very specially defensive because one Coco can run both. Hydreigon is gonna drop Dracos and that's gonna suck. But I also need it to be able to like you know deal with Coco Lucha. So Hippo is here to uh, to kind of just all around be super annoying and hopefully live hits and stay healthy. I, with this amount of Spadef, something like Scarf Gengar can't do it KO me. So that's not terrible. But boosting item is going to be a problem. So we'll see. We'll, we'll fucking scout and we'll see. Then, I know I know you've seen the title of the video and you're waiting for this moment. But listen to me. I have a plan, sir. And or ma'am. Um, choice Scarf Excadrill. In the sand. Outspeeds Halucha after an unburden boost. Right? So you already know you boys going to be bringing that Choice Scarf Sand Rush Excadrill. With the uh, X scissor just to be able to hit stuff like Shaman a little better, a little better, as well as Hydreigon to hit super effectively, and I think that's it. <laughs> but we got spin for spin, and then just dual stab iron head earthquake. It's very good versus him. Honestly, if I can get this thing to work at the proper moment, I think it can put a huge dent in his team or potentially catch him off guard. But obviously, with the electric seed, how Lucha gets a lot bulkier really fast, <laughs> like. And also, I was too scared to fuck with speed tiers. I was doing, I was like testing on showdown with different speed tiers and stuff. Nobody brings Jolly fucking Hellucha. That has never came to a match ever. Like, that's just not a thing. Obviously, I'm kind of kidding. That could probably be a thing if, you know, you maybe you face another Unburdened team or something. But, um, yeah. So, with an Adamant Nature and Max Attack and Max Speed, this just guarantees that I outspeed 99% of all variants of Hellucha. I'm pretty sure he's just going to be Adamant, probably bulky. And like you know, max attack, max HP. So you can you can always just go the standard max max, or you can you know get more frivolous with your EVs. But basically, for like a max HP plus one defense set, Iron Head does right at half damage. So basically, that means that uh, I need something, I need everything on my team to not allow Halucha to set up to like set up an SD without taking at least 50% worth of the damage. So obviously, Big Doinks here is kind of immune to that because we have Roar. So that, uh, if we can just get it out of there, it won't really matter, but Iron Head does half. Uh, now Tapu Lele, obviously this thing's gonna blow away at Halucha, so oh, I'm not really too worried about that little rule we had just now, but Taunt 3 attacks is super good versus him. I can just lead off with this bad boy. I can just lead right off with this modest Tapu Lele with the Focus Sash. Live any hit. If he wants to have, uh, like... Iron Tail Hydreigon, I'm living. If he wants to bring, like, Gigavolt Coco, I'm living! Uh, Earthquake from Mamo isn't going to kill me, and then he can't Ice Shard me on the next turn because of the second terrain. 
uh, if he doesn't get rocks up and like the sand isn't a thing, and uh, he's set up to a million with uh, with, Tapu, with Tapu Lucha, then this guy this guy's gonna come save the day. You just watch. So hopefully this guy can put in some work here. This girl, whatever the fuck Lele is, we got just dual stab plus thunderbolt to hit stuff like Empoleon. And other than that, it should be pretty. Fu it's self-explanatory. He has another. Uh, no, he doesn't actually. I'm just super lazy. I had EVs and shit all like put on, but I was like, if I'm just gonna be focused, Ash, I'm just gonna go max max to save myself the problem of having to gen, you know? Because I got a, I got power saves, so that shit's annoying. Then, once again, we're bringing Flame Orb, Quick Feet, Jolteon. This thing was gonna outspeed like fucking everything on this man's team. Uh, this takes advantage of the electric terrain as well as outspeeds Coco. No sinker noise this time. Trust me, I man. I fucking tried to fit Synchro Noise on this set. When I first initially started building, I was like, well, we gotta have Synchro Noise Jolteon. But Signal Beam and Hidden Power Grass seemed much more efficient. And then the Protect is there to guarantee my to guarantee my Quick Feet Flame Orb. Also, if he wants to go for HJKs versus me, he's gonna take 50% damage. So we'll see how all that goes. But HP Grass, Signal Beam, Thunderbolt is pretty decent coverage for his team. I'm able to hit most things super effectively. That includes the Hydreigon, the Shaman, the Mesprit. Uh, the Mammoth Swine, everything, literally everything on his team, except for Snorlax and Gengar, are hit super effectively by this guy. So that's clean. This can potentially sweep, not sweep, but it can clean up late game. It uh, doesn't have Thunderbolt, it doesn't have Volt Switch, so no momentum, but like I said, this thing's just here to click buttons. Then, we have something that uh, I... I honestly, like, I didn't feel very good about this whenever I was building it, but, like, it kind of needed to come. So, uh, like, like I was saying, man, <laughs> great saying, man, uh, Halucha's scary. So, I got Tailwind on here, just so if I can get up to Tailwind, that way, Scoot will guarantee to outspeed at plus one. That's just another kind of thing that we have to be able to outspeed that. Because that's just scary, man. And, uh, this here Kartana under Tailwind is super threatening because we have the Bugnium Z with x Scissor, So his two best stops to Kartana are Shaman and Mesprit, both of which are weak to Bug. A Savage spin out from this little, this little paper cut bitch is gonna hurt a lot. Like I always say, man, that is 181 base attack. How could you not draft Kartana? Like, yeah, you gotta scout for the occasional HP fire, but like 181. Come on, man, what are you doing? Then we also have, uh, you know, that young terrain boosted Psycho Cut. Uh, like I said, Tailwind. I don't have Z Tailwind this week because I'm a pussy, but oh well. Uh, Sacred Sword just hits stuff like Hydreigon. It's that Mamoswine, Empoleon, all that good stuff because I am not running any stab on this Kartana. So this is just a three attacks, basically typeless fucking Kartana here with the Bug Z just to guarantee a kill. I'm not, I'm not looking for Kartana to sweep this game. Kartana isn't much of a sweeper unless it's Choice Scarf or you just have webs up or really good speed tiers versus your opponent. But this time it's looking like we're gonna we're gonna clean up. We're not not clean up. What am I talking about? We're gonna wall break. That's what we do. We're breaking walls out here. Not the fourth wall though. Then last but not least, we have Silvali. This this set changed around like nine times. Uh, originally I was just gonna run Silvali normal with like a berry or some shit on it like I did last time, but I was like, you know what? Nah, this team, the five that I have do pretty well, but I have no switch into Hydreigon because Big Doings is put under pressure by the entire rest of his team. So we went ahead and just slapped Silvali Fairy on there. If he does want to have something like Flash Cannon or Iron Tail, like I said, uh, we'll, we will probably scout with that, scout for that because we're going to be leading Lele. And Dual Fairy on the team isn't great because, like I said, he can't have those, uh, those Steel type moves, and then he also has a Gengar which is super fucking threatening, but hey, I have a very intricate EV spread that is totally not just me trying to live uh, Hydreigon's hits better. <laughs> um, no, but the defensive investment, I believe, allowed it to take Adamant Life Orb uh, Earthquake, if I'm not mistaken. And then the special defense was just to be able to, uh, like I said, take take those Coco Hydreigon hits a little bit better. Because this is, like, my team kind of just loses to Dark Pulse spam if I don't have this guy right here. Because Sash Lele, like, it's it's neutral, and he's probably going to be Scarf Hydra anyways. So, we'll see how all that goes. But we do have T-Bolt, Ice Beam, Toxic, Parting Shot. Parting Shot's just annoying. Toxic is in case he wants to sit in there with Mesprit, Shaman, uh, all this other gross shit that he can just kind of sit in there and just be annoying with. We're going to Toxic those, motherfuckers. Including Snorlax. That's, that's also a thing. 
and uh, Thunderbolt in the terrain blows away a Halucha. Obviously, he's going to have a shitload of bulk investment, so I probably won't Oko him, but it does like 80% or so if the terrain is up. And then we got Ice Beam just to be able to hit Hydreigon, uh, Shaman, shit like that. Now, the only thing with Silvali here is that it is not the best, like, uh, in, in terms of uh, offensive pressure, it is not the best Mon, so I can't really kill anything with it. I kind of just need to be parting shotting, parting, sh parting shot, parting shitting out and toxicing things and just dipping up out of there because he's super easy. Like he can get taken advantage of stuff like Coco. That's like basically a free call mind. Uh, Hydreigon can, uh, if it has, you know, uh, steel moves, it's going to fuck me up. And then uh, substitute Gengar, home claws, arrow, stuff like that. If it's just not very strong. However, we are modest. And we do have just enough special attack to be able to do, uh, I believe it's a two-hit KO Hydreigon? Man, guys, I'm sorry. It's been a minute since I had this battle. I don't remember exactly what the EV spread was for. But with that, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. You've seen the sets. It is time. So here we are with the battle. As you can see, he brought the Hydreigon, the Shaman, Mamoswine, Tabu Koko, Halucha, and Gengar. I'm pretty sure this is, it's only at 20 and it's too loud. How does this even happen? We'll leave it at like a clean 12. But to looking at this team, I am just going to do what I said. We're leading off with Scarf Lele and we're going to click it. We're going to click buttons. That's my favorite part of Pokemon battling is just having a top two Lele and clicking buttons. This boy is modest and is not fucking around. It's going to do so much damage to anything on this man's team. I'm excited. So... This man, Pokemon Trainer Drake, is going to send a challenge. He's going to lead off with TTM Jolt, which is the Hydreigon. And I'm going to lead out with Lele. So I'm modest. I'm going to do a fuckload of damage. Uh, basically, I don't think he stays in here unless he is Scarf. So I'm just going to fire off Moonblast just because if he is Scarf and goes for the Flash Cannon and Iron Tail, I want to be able to hit him. But he's just going to U-turn out. And the fact that he does U-turn out shows me he's pretty much guaranteed to be Scarf because you not you don't want me to be Scarf Lele and just bop the shit out of your Hydreigon turn one, you know? It's not worth the U-turn chip to lose your Hydreigon. So he goes into Coco and changes the terrain. I'm not clicking Psychic, man. I don't care. I am Modest Lele. Moonblast does so much damage. Holy fuck. And Thunderbolt, uh, you know, Lele has really good spit up. So Thunderbolt is going to leave me at 12 and Moonblast is going to take out the Tapu Coco. So, in the first... Two and a half minutes of this battle, we have already killed his terrain setter. So now he's going to go into uh, Hydreigon once again, and he's going to be able to force me out. But uh, I think he should U-turn because that would kill me, and I have this Silvali right here, but he doesn't know I'm Silvali Fairy until this very moment right here. Until this very moment right here. So he's going to go for the pulse. That's Scarf damage, and uh, that doesn't do a lot to me. So he's uh, he has to switch out, obviously. So I can just go right for that parting shot. He's actually going to go into his Halucha. Uh, going into his Halucha on Fairy type, I'm assuming he's going to sack. I still hate Halucha, man. Look at his little clit. I do not like that Pokemon. But we're going to parting shot out. So he does have a, a physical defense boost, but now he is minus one attack. And uh, this thing is not looking like a threat. So I go into Jolteon. I'm going to go ahead and get my Flame Orb. I'm going to be terrain boosted. And uh, even though this thing will outspeed me, he's at minus one. High Jump Kick does not kill me from any... Halucha, and uh, Drain Punch isn't going to do anything. So he's going to go hard Mammo. Good play. I'm not going to let that threat, like, I'm not going to let him SD in my face or something like that. I don't know, man. I just clicked Thunderbolt. I'm scared, but the electric terrain is gone. We do not have to worry about that man being un- He's going to be burdened the rest of the time. He's got a lot on his plate right now. So, uh, figuring him to either go for Earthquake or to to uh, set up Stealth Rocks. I'm going to go right into Tapu Lele. I have no switch ins to Mammo. Nobody has any switch ins to Mammo. So, I'm going to set the terrain one more time and sack off Lele. If he did want to go for Rocks there, at least I would have got him Lele one more time and I would have gotten another kill with Moonblast. So he reveals to be Life Orb Mammo Swine, which is clean because after he's taken one Life Orb hit, he's in range of Sacred Sword. So, I don't have Stab. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to click Sacred Sword. And uh, he's going to go into his Shaman now, Geo. And look at this. Look at this Sacred Sword damage. He's going to just chop him right in the fucking forehead. He's going to do about 25, roughly. After lefties, he's sitting he's sitting about, you know, 80%, 80, 82, somewhere in there. I'm Bugnium Z. We have discussed this. I'm about 
to put this boy in a cocoon. We about to put this man in a cocoon. Akame once again surrounds himself with the Z power. This has been Z move every fucking week on Kartana. I really need to bring Z move on some of the Pokemon, but I probably never will. Because Kartana, man, that's a free beast move for the Z move. Look at him just getting slammed around. He put him we put him in the cocoon. We split him in half. And Shaman is done. My name being very close to Shaman, you'd think I would like Shaman, but I don't. That's not a, I don't like that Pokemon. My attack is gonna rise. So he's gonna go out into Lars, which is the Gengar. And now the problems begin because I have no switch into this thing if he's boosting item. If he's Scarf, I'll speed him. I mean, uh, I'll take two. So hopefully he's, he's not, but uh, we'll see. So we're gonna set up the sand. We're Rindo Berry, we're not Lifty, so that is unfortunate, so we can't even get that recovery. He's gonna fire off a Shadow Ball. It looks like we're good. Nope, does right above half. That man is Timid Life Orb, and he gets the Spadef drop. Unfucking Fort. But wait, there's more. He goes for the Giga Drain. We have Rindo Berry. We're minus one Spadef. We live on 3 H fucking P. 3 HP! Hippo lives! This little fucking. Ashy Hippo is in here, gets up the Stealth Rocks, guaranteeing that all Sashes, potential Sashes, will be broken. We're going to get Chip on everything on the team. And instead of him gaining recovery and uh, being at basically full health, now he's got to take another round of Life Orb and another round of Sandstorm. So he's going to be at like 70, 65 or 70% by the end of this turn. And that is looking clean, because that boy is in range of like everything on my team. So... Gengar tries to get a little bit of health back, and it, it, unfortunately, we kind of get that clutch live, but that's fine. So, he's in range of Iron Head. I can just go for Iron Head. I'm clicking Iron Head. I don't care. I don't need to click Earthquake. He has his uh, Halucha right here, as well as a Hydreigon. But, uh, it don't matter, son. Call me Akon, because it don't matter. I got you. So, he's got Hydreigon in there. I Iron Head the fuck out of him. And uh, Sand ends on this next turn. So, he actually makes a great play here and goes out into the Alucha, expecting another Iron Head. He knows he can live because he's bulky. So he's going to go for the... I go for the Iron Head, right? Right in the clit. He is... He's low. The Sandstorm subsides. He gets a free Roost here, right? He gets a free Roost. I'm Choice fucking Scarf. Sand Rush. Excadrill. Boy picks up a kill versus the Alucha. Things are looking fantastic for me. So he's going to take a little bit more rocks. I'm not sure. He might have another switch in. I don't really know, honestly. I think he definitely needs to go for U-turn here. I have an easy switch into this thing, but he actually just chooses to go for the Dark Pulse once again, which, um, I don't know. At this point, I was it, it's looking like Excadrill is a huge threat. So I, I get the Dark Pulse, but, like, I have a Silvali right there. So I don't know, man. I go for the Parting Shot. I take two pulses easily. This man has taken three pulses, and he is not at half health. Not below half health yet, so that's clean. So we'll get the fuck on out of here. I Drake on is easily in range of uh, Signal Beam. So we're going to go ahead and shoot that off. I, I could probably just click Thunderbolt, <laughs> but if he did go into Mammoth Swine, I want to at least get a little bit of damage off on that guy. Because we do have HP Grass. It only does around a half to Mammoth, because he's so fucking thick. But... Oh well. So he goes out into Tom, the man must win, the wrecker of our team. And uh, it's time to pick another sack because I'm not about to sack my Jolteon. Jolteon is guaranteed to clean up at the end of this game. And I'm not worried about it. So we're going to switch right on to Savali. This thing does nothing else. Earthquake is going to blow me away, especially if he's like the, the, the you know, adamant life orb man most wine. Yeah, that's going to, we, we just die. That, that little bit of defensive and HP investment we had is not going to save this man. It's not going to save me, the, this man being Sovali, from the Earthquake. But, now, I don't even fucking need sand, my guy. I don't even need sand. We go over the Iron Head, kill the Mamoswine, that boy drops. And then, uh, Gengar's going to come in. It's going to take some rocks damage. He's He was already in range of the Iron, Head, the Iron Head before he took 12 more percent, but he took 12 more percent, so this boy is, he's dropping. He's smiling right now, he don't know, he's dropping. He's, he's a ghost type, so he's already dead, I guess, but, like, he's, he's double dead now. So, with that, the Dallas Starmies fucking finally pick up our second win in the PCL, Week 5, versus Drake. Definitely check out his channel. Check out his side of the battle. Oh, his team name is the Sydney Savalis, by the way. I don't know how I forgot to mention that, but...
holy dumb fuck, guys, I, I'm shooketh. I'm I'm happy with how the team performed, and I'm glad that we are no longer taking just an endless stream of big old fat L's. It's the best feeling, honestly, is not losing all the time. Like, a loss every now and then is to be expected, but constant losses, that is terrible. And no, I'm not throwing shade at anybody, <coughs> Austin, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're no longer, we, we ain't, we ain't in, that, in that boat anymore. Speaking of which, we actually play Austin next week. So now that I've talked all this shit, I, I can't lose to him because then I'm going to look like an asshole. So we'll see. But definitely check out uh, Drake's side of the battle. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Do all that bullshit. And I will see you guys next week. Bye forever.